Okay, so thus far, we have been looking at the forces that the spring exerts on an object. So we've looked at this brick that has been compressing the spring, and um, we looked at the stiffness of the spring. But now what we want to do, so we were drawing free body diagrams essentially of the brick, okay? But now what we want to do is we want to also have a look at the spring. And we want to draw a free body diagram of the spring and see the different forces that are being applied to the spring. Okay? Whether it's compression or stretching. Okay? So here we've got um, three examples. We've got a spring, we have a rope, and we have a thread. They all have the same brick or same force being applied to it okay but now let's draw a free body diagram of the spring or of this of the let's see what they call it it's just it's called the object being stretched okay so here we have there's the free body diagram or I mean there's the uh, the spring the center of mass and what are all the forces acting on it you've got the force it's a contact force of the ceiling on the spring okay C S. That's up obviously because the because the spring is in equilibrium. We have the the upward force of the ceiling on the spring holding it up. We also have the one that we, we understand and we expect the gravitational force of the brick on the spring. So it's, um, there we go. That's the one I'm looking for. F G E S force of gravity, earth on spring, okay? And then we've also got force, a contact force of brick on spring. So those are the three forces acting on it, okay? However, if, and I hope you, I hope you pay attention now, if this member that's being stretched, if its inertia is relatively small, then we know that the force of gravity on this member is going to uh, reduce okay so now let's look at exactly the same setup but now instead of a spring we have a rope okay so I just want to show you again this this spring has three forces acting on it it has the the ceiling upwards it has the brick downwards and it has gravity being applied to itself downwards okay those three However, if the inertia of this member is smaller, like a piece of rope, which is less than, a, say, a steel spring, then can you see that the force of gravity on the rope is smaller? However, the other two forces are identical. Okay? And then, you could even consider a thread. Right? A little thread. And because its inertia is so small, we can approximate the gravitational force on it as zero, yet the other two remain the same. Okay? So, we would like to now consider some, this, this, uh, the second idea in the section called tension. Okay, so in general, if the force of gravity exerted on any object being stretched... The force of gravity, this is this, it's that, let's get back there, right? It's this one, that force of gravity there, force of gravity. Um, if it is much smaller than the forces that cause the stretching, then you can ignore the force of gravity, okay? Uh, it's repeated here again. The force exerted on one end of a rope, spring or thread, is transmitted undiminished to the other end. Okay? So if you've got a rope and you apply a force at the one end of the rope, it is transmitted all the way to the other end. Does that make sense? Provided the force of gravity of the rope, spring, or thread is much smaller. Okay? So I, I'm sorry that I'm harping on this. But here's your, your spring, rope, thread. There's the object being stretched. Here's the force being applied. Okay? Um, if 
if we assume that the, the, the inertia of this object is so small, then this force that's being applied here is transmitted, undiminished to this side. Okay? It is transmitted right through the rope. Okay. So a rope being used to pull an object is subject to, is subject to two equal outward forces. One on each end. Imagine a rope and you're, you're pulling this side and it's attached to something with, and it's pulling something. Then that rope is equal, uh, is subject to two equal outward forces, one on each end. Where is figure 11? Let's find figure 11. I mean 811. How can I? There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so you're pulling here. But what's actually happening is if you draw a free body diagram of the rope, um, you're pulling there and there's a force of, of the, the brick, is this a, a box on the rope, which is to the right. Please make sure that you get this, guys. Okay? So, let's go back here again. And so the stress caused by this pair of forces is called tension. Okay? And the forces are called tensile forces. Okay. Alright, see you in the next one.